What is an IRA, an individual retirement account? Your friends talk about theirs. Your mom is taking money out of hers. And Dave Ramsey, well, he loves them, especially the Roth variety. What's all the fuss? Well, when I'm done with you, you'll have a working knowledge of IRAs and the confidence to chat about them with mom, your friends, and, and even Dave Ramsey, if you can get through. Although folks have been investing for centuries, IRAs are relatively new. The traditional IRA was born in 1974. His cousin Roth arrived on the scene in 1997. Here's the first key I want you to wrap your head around. The IRA, Roth or regular, is not, not the investment. It's the wrapper around the investment. The tax wrapper, that is. It's how the investment is treated for tax purposes. <laughs> and you know, if you're making money with an investment, Uncle Sam is standing by for his slice. You can open an IRA at the bank, credit union, investment firm, online broker, or mutual fund family. How well it performs will be determined by the investment you choose to put inside the IRA. You could own an individual stock such as Apple or Coca-Cola in an investment account. The same goes for mutual funds, ETFs, exchange-traded funds, and bonds. You could also own those same investments inside an IRA. The wrapper, Roth or regular, will determine the tax treatment, your ultimate tax liability. The key takeaway here is the IRA is not the investment, but the tax wrapper. The wrapper for whatever investment is held inside the IRA or Roth IRA. Here's what those different tax wrappers do. With a traditional IRA, you put money in, which might lower your taxes now, a tax deduction, but you'll pay taxes later when you take the money out. There are some qualifiers for the traditional IRA deduction, such as whether you have a retirement plan at work and how much money you make. We'll address those another time. Just get the concept today. A traditional IRA offers a potential tax deduction now. You settle up with Uncle Sam later. With a Roth, it's just the opposite. You settle up with Uncle Sam now and pay taxes on the money you put in, but later, when you're chilling watching Wimbledon and Djokovic win his 37th Grand Slam title, you won't owe taxes on whatever you withdraw. IRAs are so attractive tax-wise, there's gotta be a catch, right? Well, there is. A limit, a limit to how much you can contribute each year. For 2023, if you're under age 50, you can put in up to $6,500. If you're 50 or older, you can put in an extra $1,000 on top of that for a total of $7,500. They call that the catch-up contribution. In 2024, the maximum rise is $500 to $7,000, while the catch-up for the 50 and over crowd remains the same at $1,000. With IRAs, you can't just take the money and run whenever you want. Uncle Sam encourages you to leave the money alone until so-called retirement time. Generally, if you withdraw money before age 59 and a half, you might face penalties. But there are some exceptions like buying your first home or paying for education. And there's something called required minimum distributions, RMDs, that applies only to traditional IRAs. Remember, you may have never paid any tax yet on your traditional IRA. Uncle Sam says, hey, we better get our slice before this guy checks out for good. So whether you want the money or not, once you hit age 72, you must start taking out a minimum amount each year. It's like the IRS knocking and saying, hey, it's time to start using this money. We want our cut. But with Roth IRAs, no such requirement during your lifetime. No soup for you, no RMDs for you. So remember, IRAs, Roth, and regular are tax wrappers around the investment. And they're so attractive that the IRS limits how much goes in and when it can come out. Now, go ask mom to come out for coffee. You've got enough ammo now to chatter up about IRAs and ask her what kind of investment she has inside her IRA and see where that goes.